Welcome back, the political segment in full. President Abdel Fattah Sisi on Tuesday witnessed a simulation session of the UN Human Rights Council as part of the second day of the World Youth Forum events. Simulation sessions of UN organizations are a recurrent important event that features high officials during the World Youth Forum with the aim of discussing issues of international concern. President Abdel Fattah Sisi on Tuesday addressed the World Youth Forum session entitled From Glasgow to Sharm el Sheikh Combating Climate Change. The president asserted that facing climate change risks is possible, saying that new opportunities can be created out of the crisis as humankind is the sole reason who is capable of construction and destruction at the same time. President Abdel Fattah Sisi cited the project of lining fresh water canals in Egypt as an example of a mega project aimed at facing climate change challenges. The head of state said despite the huge cost of the canal lining project, it creates promising opportunities as part of Egypt's keen interest in pursuing all sorts of projects needed for sustainable development and protecting the environment. The From Glasgow to Sharm el Sheikh Combating Climate Change session was held ahead of the upcoming UN COP27 climate change conference due to be held in Egypt's city of Sharm el-Sheikh later this year. Youth from 196 countries are participating in the four-day forum. Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli addressed the session from Glasgow to Sharm el-Sheikh combating climate change and Madbouli said environmental changes drawn by global warming are increasingly growing into a governing issue by all standards. He stressed that the world should face these challenges in full determination and speed so as to cope with the challenge posed by them. The Prime Minister added that Egypt has put plans for facing its persistent environmental problems of water scarcity and agricultural and industrial and household waste water treatment. Madbouli confirmed that Egypt is well prepared for the upcoming COP27 climate change conference due to be held in the city of Sharm el-Sheikh next November. He said the conference would focus on Africa in particular and developing nations in general, adding that coordination among those countries over initiatives proposed to face climate change was undergoing. Meanwhile, U.S. Envoy for Climate Change John Kerry participated via a video conference at the session from Glasgow to Sharm el-Sheikh combating climate change. Kerry thanked President Abdel Sisi for his interest in the climate change issue and for his uh, and for commitment to hold uh, the upcoming UN conference on climate change COP27. The US climate change envoy called for an active youth participation in facing global warming and climate change all over the world. Speaking at the session, the director of Egyptian Foreign Ministry's Climate and Environment Department Ambassador Mohamed Nasr called for the provision of necessary support from African and developing countries through easy loans and grants in order to enable them to face environmental challenges and achieve sustainable development. On the sidelines of the World Youth Forum in the South Sinai resort of Sharm el-Sheikh, President Fatah Sisi held a meeting with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. The president stressed Egyptian constant positions in support of the Palestinian cause and reaching a peaceful, fair and comprehensive settlement in the Middle East that is based on UN resolutions. President Fatah Sisi asserted Egypt's keen interest on backing current Palestinian diplomatic moves regionally and internationally that seek a political track that ensures a resumption of peace negotiations. For his part, the Palestinian president hailed Egypt's efforts that would enable the Palestinian people to confront different challenges. On the sidelines of the World Youth Forum in the Red Sea Resort city of Sharm el-Sheikh, President Fatah Sisi inspected on Tuesday the Offices of Entrepreneurs, Sons of Sinai Exhibition, Our Heritage Exhibition and Decent Life Museum. The President listened to participants of the, ex of the exhibition who hailed his support to their enterprises. The head of state also listened to some folkloric songs while the participants showed him some handicrafts. 
On the sidelines of the World Youth Forum, Nile TV's correspondent Noha Ale held this interview with Al Amin Ishaq Musa, CEO in Nigeria. So, uh, please, uh, can you uh, introduce yourself? Okay, my name is Al Amin Ishaq. I am from Nigeria. I studied mechanical engineering from Ahmadu Bella University. And I currently run my postgraduate di diploma at Nigerian University of Technology and Management. Uh, yes. Can you talk about your participation in this forum? Okay, I think it's a very, very nice experience. This is my second time here, but I think the improvement has been massive. I really love the way um, the organizers are trying to create, give everyone a sense of belonging here because everyone is important here. So I really love that kind of energy, and I think Egypt is the home for everybody. And what, is, uh, what are the differences between uh, the next, next edition and this edition? The, the pre you mean the previous edition? Okay, so I think, okay, so uh, there's a lot of improvements in terms of um, the participants and in terms of, um, for example, uh, the last time I was here, I was at the labs, that was startups. So um, this year also, I, I met a couple of different businesses which are doing really, really well. Uh, and I met some of my friends again that we, 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 we did um, the previous one. And again, um, like the, the whole organization is just so, so very nice. Yes. Okay, so uh, my organization, uh, we are still doing well. We are still doing fine. And um, some partners that we partner with um, recently, like when we came here before, we are still um, in touch with them and then we are still helping each other. We are still partnering, we are still doing things together. So I think it's a very great platform for entrepreneurs and youths. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. On the sidelines of the World Youth Forum, Nile TV's correspondent Nohale held this interview with Harry Manta from Ghana. Let's take a listen. Okay, so I'm Harry uh, Manta from Ghana. The uh, um, uh, CEO of um, Philomat Consort in Ghana. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I came as a uh, delegate um, to participate in the World Youth Forum, and um, so far, uh, what I have gone through, um, the sections, the workshops that we've gone through, I see to be awesome. Yeah. This is your first time in Asia. Yes, this is my first time. And, uh, what do you think? Uh, the, the, our country? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, you know, um, a very friendly um, country where uh, I have had the opportunity to uh, meet a lot of people. Yeah, um, the people here are awesome, uh, very warm, uh, welcoming. I really love this place. In fact, I would say they've really done very, very well because I'm um, uh, gathering uh, a lot of people from around the world uh, for such a conference. They've really, really done very well, and I see everything on point. So, uh, yeah, um, kudos to them. They've done very, very well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. The World Youth Forum and on the sidelines of the fourth edition of the forum, Nile TV's correspondent Henny Safe conducted the following interview with Dr. Sara Mohammed Hegi, PhD and leadership coach in Sharm el Sheikh. Ladies and gentlemen, on the sidelines of the World Youth Forum, I'm joined here by Anwar Jawi, the YouTuber, influencer, call it what you may. Anwar, first off, thank you very much for coming to the World Youth Forum and welcome to Egypt. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here. So amazing to see so many different cultures come together. And honestly, I met maybe a hundred different people from so many different places and it's been incredible. This is your first time here in Egypt. How? First time in Egypt. I love it so far. The people are great. I mean, I'm Palestinian. I go back home often, so you know, I see the similarities there and stuff, so I feel like we're cousins, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, uh, Anwar, you started off with the vines, I mean, it was seven seconds video, yeah, yeah, man. yeah man. I'm a big fan, but, so, with the progression of your videos and the level of production, uh, it's, it goes bigger and bigger by the month. Now, 
what was it like starting off from the vines, seven second videos on mobile phones up until a proper full-blown production? I'll tell you the truth, I miss those days. You know, like no pre-production. Obviously, it's more rewarding now because of all the all the thought that goes through it and all that. But back in the days, it was just the phone and, you know, you'd get the same reaction, you know, whether it was a seven second video or a 10 minute YouTube video. Obviously easier you know Love both formats you know well there is a big sort of community of youtubers and uh, comedians as well and entertainers as a whole that started off from that small scale up until yeah the big scale People now that are doing really really big things you know and that they all came from vine you know big movie stars huge I mean the Paul brothers, who are good friends of mine, a lot of people hate them, but you know they're really good friends of mine. They're making a huge impact, and they came from Vine. You know, like uh, I'm opening up my second restaurant. You know, and that's you know that's where I started, and that's what I slowly evolved into this entrepreneur. You know, and hopefully you'll be seeing me in a movie later on this year. You know, and become a filmmaker, restaurant owner. Does it put more pressure on you uh, trying to live up to the expectations and maybe a, a, some sort of uh, a pressure of competition among many uh, other YouTubers? Does it really put you under a lot of pressure to find new interesting content to be timely and entertaining at the same time? It's great. I love it. Without competition, there's nothing. You know, it's what sets the bar. You know, if there was no competition, it's like, okay, cool, I'm good with what I've done. But when you see the competition, or sometimes you collaborate with these people, you know, sometimes the competition are your best friends or you help each other, you know what I mean? And we need that. We need that. We need the competition. You know, it evolves us, you know. Well, you've started off with the seven seconds videos, uh, I mean, vines, and now you're into practically short movies you know 10 minute videos is it so hard for people now who are still trying to start their own videos seven seconds one minute videos does it now because you've you've come a long way do you feel that for younger uh, or more amateurish uh, people is it much more pressure for them to make it big well I, I will say one thing it's a very saturated you know career now right so you see so many people trying to become influencers and stuff but the small format the simple stuff like I'll tell you the truth there's so many big youtubers that I work with or that I see on a daily it's the smaller ones now that that really interest me you know what I mean the ones that are filming in their car and it always goes back to that the ones that you don't put so much effort into as long as you got a you have a good personality whether you're being funny or you're a baker or whatever profession you have or whatever it is you want to do it doesn't matter if it's six seconds it doesn't matter if it's shot on an on an iPhone a nice camera it does not matter as long as you know the contents there and the authenticity is there you're good so I would say just never give up and start, I started from seven second videos and now like you said alhamdulillah I'm making short films you know well you said that you're hoping to uh, be part of uh, a feature film in the near future. Is it an easy transition uh, from the videos to making it to the feature film? I, is it easily accepted by YouTubers to get into the the industry? Um, not to toot my own horn or anything, but a lot a lot of people know that I really go hard with you know making sure I have that film look. So. Even if it takes me a few hours setting up the lighting, um, working through the script with the actors and stuff. So for a film, let's say I want to make a two-hour film, let's say, I would just treat it as a lot of my YouTube scenes and put them together and just have a story arc. You know what I mean? So if you collectively add up all the time I've had on my YouTube videos, I could probably make, I would have made like 30 movies by now. You know what I mean? So as long as, you know, so, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, what was your question again? I feel, I feel like I, I, I kind of got off on a tangent. No, 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 it's all right. Well, m making it to uh, a feature film, are you also 
do you still want to be involved in uh, the the comical genre satire, or do you have uh, another interest in other genres? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, whatever. I feel like it's always on the mood. You know, there there are months where I'm just like, you know what? I, I kind of want to make people cry at the end because that's how I feel, or I, I'm feeling this way. That's the kind of content that I that I want to create. So, you know. It all depends on the mood, but at the end of the day, I always want to make people laugh, you know? Now, about the World Youth Forum, what sort of sessions or what sort of activities are you looking forward to uh, attending or participating in? There's so many. I kind of want to go to the low-key ones, you know? You know, where the ones with the smaller crowds, just because, I don't know, I just want to show that support, you know? I'm going to show the support. So I'm going to be hopping around a lot, you know? I can't just go to one, you know? So I'm going to be doing that for the next three days. Anwar, it's uh, been a pleasure having you here on Nile TV International. Hope you enjoy the World Youth Forum and your stay here in Egypt. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Anwar Jubewi, the YouTuber and influencer from the United States. I'm Henny Saif. Thank you for joining us. And still following up on the sidelines of the World Youth Forum, Nile TV's uh, correspondent, Hani Saif, conducted the following interview with Dr. Sara Mohammed Hegi, PhD and leadership coach in Sharm Sheikh. Let's take a listen. Ladies and gentlemen, on the sidelines of the World Youth Forum 2022, we're joined here now by Dr. Sara Hegi, the leadership coach from Germany. Dr. Hegi, thank you very much for joining us here on Nile TV. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me today. Uh, Dr. Hegi, uh, first off, uh, you've spent nine years in Germany studying, researching, and coaching as well. Now, after those nine years, how did you come to be here at the World Youth Forum in Egypt in Sharm el-Sheikh? Okay, so the answer is leadership. I love leadership. You see, when I was doing my PhD, I published in Nature, I got a big grant to the lab, and I also won a prize this year. And all of that, really the, the key player that made all the difference to me was the leadership training. And when I took that on, amazing things started shifting and happening in my life. So the short answer is leadership training. Well, in Egypt, we've been going through uh, our sustainable development goals that we should be achieving by 2030, the, the 15 UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And whenever we talk about the new republic, the, uh, the infrastructure, the technological infrastructure, all of the developments within all the transformational processes that are taking place in different sectors, we're always talking about human resources and training and vocational training. Now, how essential is the vocational training for the process that Egypt is going through and have, has been going through for the past few years. Yeah, I think Egypt has been going through such a transformational process that requires a new kind of leadership, a new definition, a new paradigm where all of us get included and all of us get to share a conversation for what's possible and that's exactly what we're doing here today it is a conversational that is transgenerational from all walks of life people are talking about what's really possible for us in our future and that i think is what egypt is going towards and is projecting to the world right now and i totally believe that the leadership training and coaching obviously is an essential factor to make that a reality because you see I, I love what was said inside about how we we need to separate from our past and create a new conversation and that's exactly what's possible through leadership training and coaching we need to break free from all our obstacles and blocks that were there holding us back before to engage in this new conversation and start creating a powerful reality where we are a cause in the matter for what's possible for us in our lives. And that's well, with a lot of emphasis on youth and startups uh, and entrepreneurs and everybody is becoming a manager and the boss of their own business and leaders within their own right. Now, are the challenges Egyptian youth similar or different from the challenges, for instance, European or German 
youth and entrepreneurs are facing? So from my own personal experience, one really major obstacle block, I would say, is like we're not, we don't really see or view ourselves as capable enough. So I had that also self-limiting belief. Like when I started in Germany, I had this big vision and then I started working and things weren't working out. So, and unless I really discovered for myself, what are those self-limiting beliefs? And then I inherited that from a past conversation in my environment, from my parents, from my country. And the truth is, like, the president of the Fatah Sisi is really working super hard to create a new future that is so separate from the past, where it's just hope for new things to create, to be created, sorry. And that's what we're really talking about in here. So I think one of the major obstacles for Egyptian youth, even the ones working abroad, is that we intrinsically need to start believing that we're capable enough and we're great enough to create whatever it is that we want to create. And that's what I think is like a little bit limited or yeah, it's like um, one factor that we need to expand on training and coaching more. But otherwise, I think obviously we're all humans and we all have our human experience. And of course, we have a lot of similarities. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Hagi now being uh, in the fourth, uh, the fourth edition of the World Youth Forum here in Egypt, Sharm el-Sheikh. What are the sessions that you're eager or interested to attend and participate in and what sort of conclusions or resolutions and outcomes would you want to, uh, to witness here at the World Youth Forum? Okay, so I'm definitely interested in healthcare and the future of healthcare and sustainability and the conversations that are happening transgenerationally between people to open up the space for new creations to happen and my resolution is that we continue to improve in our performance as young leaders and as organizations and so we continue to step up our leadership and create what's possible for us because what's possible for us in my modest opinion is a lot and we're just getting started and that's what I Dr. Sara Hegi, the leadership coach, thank you very much for talking to Nile TV. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure and have a great day, you guys. Thank you. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Dr. Sara Hegi, the leadership coach who's been coaching in Germany for, five, for nine years. And uh, these were some of the things that are taking place on the World Youth Forum here in Egypt. I'm Henny Seif. Thank you for joining us. And uh, still continuing with our uh, very close coverage of what's taking place in the World Youth Forum, uh, Nile TV's correspondent Henny Safe held this interview with the Russian climate and water resources expert Maria Pushkareneva and the Russian UN volunteer Rivat Kipev. Let's take a listen. On the sidelines of the World Youth Forum, ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by two of the participants from Russia, Maria and Renat. Maria is a water resources expert and Renat is a UN volunteer. First off, thank you very much for joining us and welcome to, uh, to Egypt. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, uh, first off, I want to ask you about the forum itself, about the organization of it. How is it for you? Uh, it's really great. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to collaborate so much with people who share the same goals with me. And Renat, um, what about the COVID precautions? I mean, obviously, we're, we just got out of and hopefully it's done the pandemic. But what about the precautionary measures, the, the masks, the uh, social distancing, the, uh, the PCRs, everything? Sure, sure. It's 100 percent used. We are really cautious about it, so we use masks first of all. We, every day we test for the for the for the for the PCR test. Also, we were required to have a vaccination first, and then when we arrive to the tour championship, we, we, we were required to have the PCR test as well. And all the time we keep we try to keep the social distancing. Although it's hard here, but we try to do that. We try to wear masks, and and I think it's a great great the measures, and we we try to keep them. So, yeah. uh, Maria, now. Egypt took part in the COP26 that took place in Glasgow and it will be hosting the COP27 this year. And you're a water resources expert and also on climate change. 
how fair or how big do you feel the um, the task of really managing the water resources and the scarcity of it and climate change as a whole? Yeah, of course, we all agree that the problem is really big right now and we all face it all together. But uh, if we keep international cooperation, we can manage it. That's what I can say. And uh, it's a great path for the COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh this year. Uh, Renat, now Egypt has its own vision regarding the uh, sus UN Sustainable Development Goals that should be achieved by 2030. Now, the 15 goals set by the UN. How far is Egypt, I mean, maybe you're not an expert on how the uh, sustainable development uh, process is taking place here in Egypt, but as a whole, the UN, how far do you feel the rest of the countries are achieving in terms of really fulfilling the maximum potential of sustainable development? So, so uh, basically, the SDGs were also... Sorry. So we are lagging behind, unfortunately, on SDGs because of the COVID, and COVID exacerbated the process And but because of the COVID. So we had a slow economic growth, you know, the pandemic is growing. Unfortunately, we're lagging behind on SDGs. But now, since the recovery is coming, we see that there is a potential for growth for Egypt, for all countries, and we see that there is a positive trend. As, as, as long as we have the investment, as long as we have the partnerships building, as long as we have support from other countries, from the international organization, I think we are getting to, to the level that we were, that, to, to, that, that we aimed for. Unfortunately, yes, the COVID exacerbated the process, the, the progress, but now I feel, and I see based on the progress, based on the reports, we're actually making a huge progress. So, uh, Maria, um, what sort of sessions are you really looking forward to uh, attending here in the forum? So far, I have already attended uh, the water policy workshop, and tomorrow I'm looking forward for climate change uh, session to discuss the issues all together. What about you, Renat? Food security, for sure, water sanitation, because it's a basic human right for me and for all people, of course, especially in Africa, and also education and economic growth. Education is a big part of me. I've been trained a lot on education, so and I think the education is a key to achieve the prosperity, to achieve the economic growth, and everything. Ladies and gentlemen, those are two of the participants uh, from Russia coming to the World Youth Forum, really discussing a lot of the issues uh, being focused on during the four-day World Youth Forum. Thank you for joining us.